Hi, Susie. I'm just bringing everybody up on Facebook. Oh, thank you. It's the one I was going to wear yesterday, but I was afraid I'd get all of that goop all over me. I'm just bringing everybody up on Facebook. Get all of that goop all over me. Oh, okay. I see a few people coming on, so we'll give it a minute or two for everybody to get on and get situated. I have a fun project for us today. If you're just joining us, say hello. La, 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 la. Well, hello, Barbara. Thanks for joining us. We're just waiting for, hi, Judy. Now you guys are coming. Hello, brother. Okay, so we got a few people here. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, today's project is these really cool shelf sitters. And I have a bunch of them. I'll put them up on my website tomorrow. These are really good project um, pieces. And especially that, you know, going into the holidays, we're going fast approaching Thankfully, will be fall and then, hi, Anne, and uh, then Christmas will be here before we know it. And so for me, I'm going to start working on fall and Christmas projects pretty darn soon. But today we're going to do, we're going to make shelf setters out of these boxes. And the good thing about them, th this is real wood, a really nice quality wood. This is MDF board, but we're gonna make it look like it's weathered wood. And we're gonna do one design here today, but for the other holidays, for uh, fall and Halloween and Christmas and all of those, you can do another design on the inside and just flip it around. So I think these are really cool and they're five bucks a piece. So um, you can get lots. And then today's project is going to be with uh, uh, sticky stencils or with um, adhesive stencils. And for this project, I'm gonna try, you guys, it's so hard, but I'm going to try and see if I can switch this around so you guys can see what things say. So let me just, see if I don't goof this all up. No, that wasn't it. Well, I don't see it on here where I can flip it. It used to have like a little uh, set of tools to do that. And I don't see that anymore. Hi, Laura. Oh, there's the tools, okay. And so I'm gonna try it this way, all right. So now you can read what they say, but just know that it's gonna be challenging for me to keep the um, 
camera in the right place because it's exactly the opposite of where it normally is. So we have one here that says, It Is Well With My Soul. That's one of my favorite songs. And then there's one that says, um, all, all I need is a little bit of coffee and a whole lot of Jesus. And this one always makes me smile. My daughter has this sign hanging over her coffee pot. Um, she has like a coffee bar area and she has it hanging in there and it always makes me smile when I see that. And then this one, I re see? <laughs> this one I really love too. His will, his way, my faith. Jeremiah 29 11. and so you guys just so you know I can do any of these kind of things put them on I can get four on a sheet and if you don't care for these sayings or these verses if you have verses uh, that you would like to have instead I can do a whole sheet for you for ten dollars and the boxes are five so that's what's involved in today's project so I'm going to start off with all I need is a little bit of coffee and a whole lot of Jesus. Um, and when you're using these, I can turn it backwards like this and you can see that you can see through here and actually without all of this light shining, I can see through better than what you are seeing in the camera. But that makes it easy to cut these in the correct spot. So that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to go ahead and just trim these up to a more manageable size. So let me do one more here and I got to be careful that I don't cut off my swag over here. These two are a little close together. Okay, so I went ahead, this is what I started with. And I went ahead and pre-painted two of them to have that wood look to them. And I'm going to demonstrate to you how to do that. It's fast and easy. I have two of them done. I'm gonna put the camera down and do the third one so it has a chance to dry. So let me get the camera down. And you guys, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. That's what I'm here for. Okay. So the first thing I did was I'm using four colors today. I'm using coffee bean. I'm using chocolate. I'm using pine cone. And I'm using drop cloth. And these are all staple colors. I use these colors all the time. And you need a spray bottle. And I already put my brush in water, so I'll get a clean one. And you need some shop cloth or lint-free cloth. I like to use these because these work like lint-free. And 
And so what we're going to do, I sprayed my brush, because with chalk paint you always need to um, have water. And the Mr. Bottles are great. And they're on my website as well. And I'm just putting a quick coat on here. I'm going to give the box a little squirt. Hi, Ellen. I have these pieces. Um, I'm going to have them on my website. I'll get them up there tonight or tomorrow. Um, they're just, they're really nice boxes, beautifully constructed. And um, they're $5 a piece. And I was saying earlier that the stencils, you can order a sheet that has four different designs to fit these boxes. You can either tell me what design you want or if you like the designs I already have made, um, you get four of them for $10 on a sheet. So if you are wanting to do um, this project, it's pretty reasonable in cost. And I was saying you can turn the boxes the other direction and do another holiday on the inside. So um, they kind of do double duty. You can have them for all year round and then you can have them for um, Christmas and Halloween and Happy New Year's, all the holidays we've got coming down the road. So now all I'm doing is wiping in one direction and taking the paint back off. And it doesn't have to be even. In fact, I don't really want it to be even. And then we'll do the sides and they actually wipe back better because they're actually wood, not MDF. And I thin the paint down I'm trying to get it in camera, you guys. There we go. Um, I thin it down with the water because we do want it to be transparent. Give it a nice spray. and then just wipe it back. And see on a piece of real wood, you, you do get to see the grain and it's super pretty. So we're using water to get a thin coat on. And if you were making these for gifts, You could just line them all up and get them all done um, really quick. We're going to get three of them done in this live today, and they will be done. You know, some of my projects I don't get done in a live. These will get done. That's how fast they are. In fact, you guys, I need to show you the mirror that I did on yesterday's live. It's done. It's a miracle. When I get this box done, I'll get the mirror and show you. Came out really pretty. And hopefully, I took pictures and posted on um, Facebook, but hopefully showing you live on camera, the color will show better because in the pictures, it doesn't show the color. I used aubergine and that's like a deep, purple eggplant kind of color. It's real, it's real dark. And I used uh, zinc gilding wax on it and oh gosh, it's really pretty. It's in the 
real pretty green there. Okay, so then the next step on this, super fast. So this is the direction I wiped it off. I'm gonna close this up and put this brush in water so it doesn't dry out on me. Okay, so the next step is we're gonna use chocolate. And I'm going to use a chip brush. And for these kind of projects, chip brushes are perfect. And when you open one up brand new, um, just wash it with soap and water and that will pull out some of the loose hairs. You're always going to have loose hairs with chip brushes. But I use them and use them and use them and use them. I rarely throw them away. Now I threw away the brush I used yesterday um, putting that stripper on the mirror. Um, but I rarely. So I dipped into the paint and then I offloaded and I might have offloaded a bit too much. So I'm gonna do it again. And with a really light feathery touch, you're just going up and down and adding some like barn wood. And it can stop and start. It can be heavier in other areas because that's the way wood ages. That's all we needed for that color. Um, the uh, coffee bean and the chocolate, I use them a lot for tops of furniture to give them that really pretty um, dark walnut finish to them if they don't already have that kind of a finish to them. Um, so it's a color that I use a lot of. Okay, and then I'm just using the same brush. I just wiped it down. I'm just dipping lightly into the pine cone. And I'm going to do the same thing. And even though these are all three browns, every one of them show up on there nicely. So that's that. We're done with that. And I'm going to give it a quick little hit with the heat gun. So that it gets good and dry. Um, because before we put the uh, stencils on, we want to have a really dry surface. And so that's why I went ahead and did the two other boxes and just left one to demonstrate how easy it is. Hi, Susan. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Sherry. good to see you guys okay so I'm gonna set this one aside we'll do that one last and just give it time for that paint to set up on it so I'm gonna give these just a hit with the heat one more time too
Okay, make sure that's under the camera for you. <clears throat> and we're gonna do, all I need is a little bit of coffee and a lot and a lot of Jesus. So this is what we're gonna start off with. And if you haven't seen me use these before, I really, really like using these kinds of stencils because you just have little to no seepage at all. They're just easy to work with. So the back side of it is like contact paper. And also when I sell these, I always include instructions with them. So I'm just peeling off this backing and what you see here is the black and this is the sticky adhesive side. And so you just carefully peel that off. And then I made these, the boxes are six by six inch and <clears throat> these stencils are five and a half by five and a half. So they pretty much fill up the whole space here. And I'm just eyeballing it. And that looks good. And so I'm just gonna lay it down and I'm gonna press it on here firmly, just using my fingers. Okay, and then this white paper here is the transfer paper. This is the paper that transfers your stencil. And so when you peel it back like this, you wanna peel it at a 45, and I'm sorry about my fingernails, that happened with the mirror. Oh, I'm gonna grab that mirror and show you guys, hold on. Okay, here's the mirror, you guys. And it's painted aubergine. It is not black. I was originally thinking I would do it black, and then I thought, oh, I'll do it hurricane gray. And then I thought, as I was digging through my paint, I came up with aubergine, and I thought, ooh, I love aubergine, and I haven't used that in a long time. And that goes really good with the black and the gray in the actual mirror. So if you didn't catch this video, this was a live yesterday afternoon. You can go back to yesterday and watch the process of antiquing this mirror. It was a fun process. And um, this is it. This is the finished piece. And I was really happy with it. Okay, back to the, today's project. So when you're taking these labels off, you wanna pull it off at a 45 degree angle. And I just saw, I don't know if you can see it, but I just saw part of a letter pop up. So just roll your paper back down and just burnish that back down on there. And it stayed. And that A, these letters are really small, so, um, I have to weed all of this out. That's what it's called where, where all the stencil part is, is weeding it. And when the letters are tiny like this, it's time consuming. But it's worth it in the end because you don't get any seepage. I'm rubbing some of that paint off my fingers now.
And one of the reasons you don't want to pull straight up on it, that, you, that it's important that you go at an angle like this, um, is because it would lift the paper up. And I think it's lifting a little bit because these boxes are freshly painted. And you can see that the bigger letters don't pull up as much. Hi, Pam. Oops, those E's came up. I am having to be a little more careful than normal, and I'm certain it's because these I laid that back down and I think I'm certain that it's just because these boxes are freshly painted. But we're going to make it work. Talk amongst yourselves, you guys. Um, on the design that comes with this are two little steaming cups of coffee on each side, but I don't like them. I think they look cheesy, so I never add them to it, but I can't take them out of the actual design, so. I'm just going to stop messing with them. I just will be sure I don't get paint on them. But see, when you get a piece like this sticking up on there, that's when you want to lay it back down and make sure it sticks to your project. And then we got more little letters. It's the A's that are a problem on here. But things like this make your crafting easy and impressive, I think. It's always fun to be able to tell people that you made this.
Yay, we did it, you guys. Success. I am sweating up a storm. My AC goes off at noon and doesn't come on again until 8. And by this time in the afternoon, um, it's warm in here. So I'm just making sure all those troubled spots are laying down like they're supposed to. And I'm going to just take um, an artist brush. And I'm going to use the drop cloth. Sometimes it's, there's the comments, okay. Drop cloth is one of those colors that's one of your basic staples too. I use it for so much. And it, it is the color of a drop cloth. So it's not white, and it's not buttercream. And I got a mess in here where the, sometimes they form a little skin. Like if you've been painting out of a jar for a long time and then you close it up. I'm just going to get it out of there and get it out of my way. And they make it hard to um, close up your jars properly, too. So it is best to get them out of there if you can. Okay, back to what we were doing. So, is this upside down to you guys? Is that better? Yeah, that's a whole lot better, huh? Okay, so you dip your brush into the paint. You just want a little bit on the tip of your brush and then pounce it off. You do not want to have water on your brush when you're doing a stencil. And so then you just pounce up and down. You don't want to go from side to side you don't really want to brush it. You just want to pounce it up and down. That way you get very little seepage and you don't run the risk of, especially since this didn't adhere as well as it needs to, you definitely just want to pounce. And Sometimes these are referred to as sticky stencils and sometimes they're referred to as adhesive. And like silk screen uh, is adhesive, but they're reusable for up to 10 times. This is a one time throw it away stencil. So I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm just going up and down, up and down.
anybody have any questions? You guys are pretty quiet. Did you guys all say hello to each other? I don't always catch everybody that's signed on. So do I have any new people on today? So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, you guys. If you're interested in doing one of these boxes, if you guys give me love, hi Laura, <laughs> good girl, thank you for doing that. If you guys give me some love and you share this video, I will give every person that shares a video a box. That's a pretty good deal, you guys. And like I said, you can get two designs out of the one box because you can still decorate the inside. I had every intention, you guys, of for Easter, I had such a cute design to put on the inside of the box, and I just ran out of time. But it was um, a cute little bunny, and he was 3D, and he was just made out of cardstock with a little um, ball on his tail, and he was a little brown bunny, and you used those foam stickers so that he was elevated from the back of it. And then I had some really um, cool, like ribbon kind of stuff to make a wreath around him. And that was it. But he was so stinking cute. And I love bunny rabbits. I love anything that's got a rabbit in it. And I really wanted to get those done for Easter. And then I had some really pretty, oh, I should show you because I have one right here. My granddaughter and I were going to do this bunny rabbit. Is it upside down? Probably. This bunny rabbit on for, for Easter. And we never got it done either. But isn't that pretty? And that fits these boxes. So it's like these boxes are very cool. There's lots of things you can do with them. And if you share, I'll share. i to speed up my pouncing here. Okay, you guys, so I have uh, a couple of TV shows that are my favorite shows, and one of them just started a new season, and that's Big Brother, and I've been watching it for 22 seasons. They've had 23 seasons. The first one was the only one I didn't get to see, and... So it just started up last week. Are any of you guys Survivor fans or Big Brother fans? I saw Virgin River was back on. Um, I haven't started, I watched the first season I haven't started the second season yet. I like that show too.
Anybody else have any favorite shows that they like to watch? I, um, you know, I paint every single day and I live by myself. My brother's coming to live with me soon. Um, but when I'm painting, I just turn the TV on and I, I listen to, I listen to things. I don't always watch. Sometimes I'll, I'll look up to see what's happening. Um, but I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I watch a lot of, uh, history on YouTube. I love anything that has to do with the royal family. Um, so I have the TV on a lot for company and you know I listen to those 2020 shows. I always make sure I get my doors locked at night. Those things give you the heebie-jeebies. Sometimes I have to just stop watching them because they freak me out too much. So what shows do you guys like to watch? Yeah, I've seen, I've watched The Crown twice. I kinda have uh, well, I do, it's not kinda, I do have a strong uh, interest in the royal family because my ancestry is related to them. I discovered about a year and a half ago that Mary Queen of Scots is my 13th great aunt. If they were still beheading people, I'd probably be one of those people that got beheaded too. Because sometimes I don't know when to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> well, if you don't like what I have on the TV, you got a TV in your room. <laughs> that was funny, Mike. But I do watch a lot of TV, or listen to a lot more, actually. Another little piece of trivia about me is that um, I eat a keto diet and I've been off of it for eight months and finally just got back on two weeks ago and already feel so much better. I do it mostly for uh, my health because it helps. I have rheumatoid arthritis and fibromyalgia and when I'm not eating keto, I get terrible flare-ups from just eating like normal people do. And eating keto really keeps that in check for me. But the bonus to that is uh, it's good for weight loss. And I had gained over COVID I had gained 28 pounds back and none of my clothes fit. So, um, so like I said, I've been back on now for two weeks and when I weighed this morning, I'd lost six pounds. Woo -woo! So I just thought I would share that with you guys in case any of you have special dietary restrictions. I think it's always good to share stuff, especially when it's good stuff. Okay, we're on the home stretch here.
Carol, you think keto's hard? Why, why do you think it's hard? What part of it would be hard for you? Part of the reason why it's not so hard for me is, you know, I'm living alone and so I don't have foods in my house. Yeah, fruits and, well, the sweets aren't good for you. It's the sugar that's not good for you. Um, the sugar in the fruit is healthy. And on keto, you can still have berries and watermelon and the low glycemic fruits. But um, sugar is just a killer, literally. And I've eaten this way for three years, so I've pretty much, of course I still like, I, I've never been a, a store bought person where, you know, cookies and cakes and stuff from the store. Um, I like homemade things, so I used to bake a lot, like banana bread and chocolate chip cookies and stuff like that. And yeah, I still miss those if they're homemade, but um, there are ways, if you just have to have that, there are substitutions and they're good ones. They're not gross. But I've just gotten to the point where I, I don't even um, crave those kind of things anymore. I love meat and I love vegetables, so I eat a lot of that. Yeah, that first seven days can be tough. It, that's no lie. And this time around, this never happened to me before, but this time around I actually ended up with vertigo from the lack of sugar. So I don't usually eat strawberries and watermelon and stuff like that, uh, but I did for like a week just to get rid of the vertigo because my body was like, what are you doing? Okay, so I'm gonna cap that off. Squirt my brush, stick it in my Ziploc bag. If you guys haven't heard me say that before, that's what you can do with your brushes in between so that they don't dry out. Okay, so now I don't wait till it's fully dry because the if you let it fully dry, then sometimes the paint will pull off with it. And so you just want to lift up and you can see why it's not a reusable. And then I forgot to bring my picker in here. Let me see if I can pick it with a, what you call it. A 
X-Acto knife. It's a little tricky to do this from this angle. There it's coming up. get these little doodads off. I have these black pieces, like when you're weeding these. I've been doing so much weeding of this this week and I have them all over me. I think I have them all off and then I find more. But can you see what a pretty finish this is? And um, how easy that was and no bleed through. Yeah, so crisp. They really are. Kathy, did you tell me that before that you have a Cricut that you haven't even um, plugged in yet? That happens to so many people because I'm telling you, the machine is intimidating and there's a good learning curve to it and it's like your Apple iPhone. It doesn't come with any instructions on how to work the darn thing. Um, but there are a lot of YouTube videos and there's a really great group on Facebook. It's um, DYI uh, Cricket or Makers or something like that. I'm a part of that group, so you would think I would know the name of it. Um, and they teach people to get it out of the box and start making stuff. And it is a membership, a monthly membership. Um, you don't have to stay in it forever, just learn the basics. But there are lots of fun projects that they do every month. I've been in it for a year and a half and I still learn new stuff from the group. Last one. Those A's didn't want to stay on, now they don't want to come off.
There we go. What do you guys think? Did I leave the E in? Oh, you're right. There we go. Did I get it all? Oh, it looks like there's a E in coffee missing too. Okay, all I need is a little bit of coffee and a lot of Jesus. I think I got it all. Okay, so there we go. That one's all done. Now, uh, if you guys want me to do another one, if you wanna hang around to see another one get done, give me hearts. If you've seen enough, um, then, um, don't give me hearts and then I'll know what to do because I can certainly do one more. I thought I'd get all three of them done today. I always think I can get more done. Okay, way to go you guys. I always think I can get more done than I actually can. So, all right. I'm just feeling it because you know when something's wet you can it has a cold cold touch to it and I'm just seeing I don't want to put the hair dryer on it again because that might have also contributed to the vinyl not sticking to it okay so shall we do okay so give me Thumbs up if you want to see It Is Well With My Soul, give me thumbs up. And if you want to see His Will, His Way, give me hearts. Hi, Mary. Good to see you. Well, we're getting ready to start another one. Um, you'll, if you go back and watch the replay, you'll see how I um, painted the boxes. But we're gonna do one more of these. So you guys, so it's the, what did I say? His will, his way is the hearts. It is well. Okay, we'll do it is well. Alrighty. So I'm gonna trim this up a little bit. And like I said, you can turn it over and you can see on the back side, you can see through this. I don't know if that shows up on the camera real well like that but and by trimming it up you don't want to trim too close uh, because you don't want your brush going off the edge but it also by trimming it up a little bit that also helps you see how to place it on your project Okay, and so we peel off the back, which is the contact paper. Sometimes it's a little tricky to get it started. And the black is the sticky adhesive. And the white on the front is the transfer paper to transfer it onto your project. And The stencils are five and a half by five and a half, and the box is six by six. And I just eyeballed it, so hopefully I did a good job. I'm gonna turn it around this way for you guys. 
and now you just burnish it on and because um, these boxes were freshly painted it is a little trickier to get that stencil to adhere properly so when you're doing these let your boxes just dry and then go back and do your stencils on them and then you pull up a corner leaving the black vinyl down and catching your transfer paper. I think I've got it started there. Yep, okay. So again, at a 45 degree angle, so that that vinyl stays down and you aren't lifting it up, and you slowly take it off to make sure that all your pieces that are still supposed to be down there stay down. And I did share with everybody today, um, these stencils, and I'll add one more to it, so there's four on a page are $10 and I'll put them up on the website tomorrow. If there's a special verse that you would like to have done, you can send that to me privately. Um, so that's $10. And the boxes are $5. And I'll have them up on the site tomorrow. But if you share this video today, you will get a box for free. And you want to go slowly because sometimes those pieces, especially because this box is freshly painted and hasn't really dried, that's why when I felt it, it was still cool to the touch. So I know, and because, you know, I sprayed water on it to wipe that paint off to get that wood finished. So Mary, you'll need to go back and watch that part of how we got this finish on these boxes. So just take your time with it. Any pieces that lift up with it, just lay it back down. It's kind of like doing a transfer, you know, the rub on transfers. Hi, LaVita. Thanks for joining us. If you guys go back and do a replay, it's always really nice if you um, just do pound replay so I know that you have visited my page and watched the replay. Like I said, normally this would adhere really well to this box, but um, I used a lot of water on it, getting this finish. And even though I've dried it with a hair dryer, I think it's still damp. So it takes a little more patience.
Okay. And for those that didn't catch it at the beginning, you can do another holiday. You can do any of the holidays or another design on the inside. So you get two designs with one. You can do a little scene on the inside or another stencil on the inside or a holiday. Um, so these are really cool boxes. Okay, so I just want to make sure everything is adhered well. There were places that were lifting up and I just want to make sure that they're all smoothed down. I love this vine on here. I think it's super pretty. Now you could paint your vine in green and do your letters in another color. I'm just going to um, do it all in the drop cloth. But wouldn't this make a really nice gift for somebody? I would love it if somebody made something like this for me. Okay, so just dip in, dry brush, no water on the brush. And when we're chalk painting, we always use water, but not when you're stenciling. So you dip in and then you pounce it off and then you start pouncing on your stencil. Just straight up and down, don't wipe your brush because especially because this one um, didn't adhere down as easily as it would if this had been a dried project. Another trick, I've never done it and I don't really think it's necessary with um, these kind of stencils, but if you're using a Mylar stencil, those are the ones that you can use over and over and over again. I have been told that you can lay down your stencil and put a top coat on and let it dry and then go back and put your color on top of that. And the top coat seals it and keeps it from leaking under. And if any leaks under, it's just your top coat. So that's a trick. Hi, Andy. Thanks for joining us. We're running a little long today, but we wanted to get, everybody said they wanted to see a second one get done. And if you're tuning in late, everybody that shares this video will get a wooden box for free. And these stencils will go, the stencils and boxes will go up on my website tomorrow. for sale. I didn't have time to get them up today and I'm too tired to do it tonight, so it'll have to wait till tomorrow. And I'm just using a artist brush, nothing special about it. And I'm just loading paint on it and offloading back into my lid.
Andy, I'm making, I painted these boxes, these um, little square boxes, taught the technique of how to get this wood look on it. And then we have three stencils and we're only gonna get um, two of them done today. And we're using adhesive stencils. The brush, Mary, is just, it's a soft brush, but you could use, you could use a, um, dry brush brush, a stiff bristled brush would work also. I just went off the edge of my thing, so I'm gonna have to touch that up with a little, little bit of brown. Thank you. Well, the stencils, there's four come on a sheet and three of them I have. I'm gonna add another verse so that there's four and they will be up on my website tomorrow and um, it's $10 for the page of four stencils. And then the boxes will be up on the website tomorrow and they're $5 a piece. And like I said, you can do another design on the inside of it. These are just little shelf sitters and you can do a design on the inside. My idea is to do like holiday designs on the inside. So you can just flip them around when it's the holidays and when the holiday's over, just flip them back again. then you don't have to store them and put them away and stuff. That's how I think. Are you guys still there? Almost feels like I'm sitting here paint by myself. Well, I'm glad. I appreciate you guys wanting to stay and see another one done.
Thanks for the thumbs up. Thank you, Laura. I will be sure and look for that. Okay, and I'm gonna go over it and just give it one more quick dab. Second time around's much faster. This color is um, drop cloth. I think it looks super pretty against um, the brown wood tones. And drop cloth is just one of those, to me, it's one of those staple colors you should have in your paint box. It's truly, um, a drop cloth color it's not it doesn't have yellow in it like buttercream does buttercream is another one I like um, but this is truly truly it's not white and it doesn't have it doesn't cast a yellow in it Yeah, it's a great color. I don't know if you remember the, it's been a few months back, but I did a really pretty um, farmhouse cabinet with crackle and I used drop cloth on it. And honestly, that's one of my favorite pieces. And when I put it up for sale, it sold in 30 minutes. The lady was here in an hour to pick it up and it went out the door. <laughs> I've got two more nightstands out in the garage. I'm going to do that same finish with using um, a coffee bean, which is the dark color that's on here. And then you put crackle on top of it and then you paint the drop cloth on top of the crackle and when the crackle cracks you see all that yummy coffee being dark through the cracks
but it's not overpowering because you've got this nice neutral color on top. It's, it's a beautiful combination. And I love doing crackle. Maybe I'll do something next week with crackle. So you guys, for those of you that don't know, I do two lives a week. I do a live on Tuesdays at four and Wednesdays at four, and that's Arizona time, Mountain Standard Time. And Tuesdays are always furniture projects, and uh, Wednesdays are craft projects. And I also um, have a website, so all of these products that you see on here are available to purchase on my website, and that's at the top of this page, top of this page. <laughs> I don't know where to point, you guys. And uh, and then, you know, there's lots of other videos. So if you've just discovered me, there's lots of other videos to choose from. So I'm going to pull this up now. I like to do it while the paint is still damp. And you need to do it slow and careful. I did have a little bleed through on this one. I guess I didn't get it burnished down well enough. I can go back with a brush and touch it up. Typically you don't. Yep, I got a lot of bleed through right there. I must not have had it down well enough, but I can touch that up. So now we'll just pull off all of these little pieces in here. Hey, did I miss any? It is well with my soul. Looks like I got them all off. And you can see how nice I touched on the edge there, so I need to touch that up. But you can see how nice this side did, but obviously this side, I didn't get it burnished down well enough. So I'll just take my brush tomorrow. I'm gonna let it dry, and I'll just take my brush tomorrow and just give it an outline. Um, but this one came out perfect. So, you know, if you were going to do these for gifts or holidays or whatever, you could get all your boxes done up one day and then the next day sit down and do all your designs. So, does anybody have any questions before we say goodbye? 
if you do have questions and I haven't answered them, um, I do go back at the end of the day and answer questions on the videos. And um, if you share the video, send me your name and address in a instant message so that I can send you one of these boxes for free. And if you're interested in the stencils and um, or want to order any of them, I'll have them up on the website tomorrow before noon. I'll be sure I get it done in the morning. So you guys, thanks so much for hanging in there. I appreciate it very much. You guys are great. And I hope you all have a good evening.